Ricky on the Boston Man Show here with Coach Todd Golden here of the USF Downs out of the West Coast Conference. Coach, how you doing, man? Good to talk to you again. I'm doing great. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on like always. Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, talk to us, man. Uh, how was it in March for you guys? I know for me, it's my birthday. March, March 11th is my birthday. Everything kind of shut down on my birthday, right? So where were you guys at March 11th, man, in that whole week? And how did that transition go for you guys going on campus to being virtual? How was that, man? Uh, it's, it, it was it was a crazy week, one that uh, one like I've never experienced before in my life. You know, we had just finished uh, – wrapping up a really tough game against Gonzaga in the conference tournament. You know, we lost by like four points in the semis, and we were coming home, and, and really we were just getting ready for the NIT. You know, we were told that we were going to be in the field, and so we were prepping for that. And then just like a bag of bricks, that thing dropped, and, you know, within three or four days, the whole school was, you know, off campus, and everything had moved to virtual learning. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really proud of our guys for the way they handled it. They handled it with a lot of maturity. Uh, you know, finished really strong in the classroom in the spring, and, and it, they didn't let it phase them too much. But I know it was really difficult for them to have their season cut short, especially for the seniors that graduated. Um, and it was just one of those things that you, you just can't prepare for it, right? I mean, once in maybe 100 years type thing. Uh, so with all that being said, it, it, it was good to see uh, our guys finish strong academically, and, and it's great to have everybody on our squad back now. Yeah, I'll talk to you about that academically going from – in person to virtual learning. Now you have the black boys and kind of keep up with the, the blackboard and here to hold them accountable for missing class if they, they can't make them go, go run all the run for you if you miss a class. So how was that keeping the guys accountable to, to the schoolwork, being at home in their own environments? Because I know kids at, at 20 years old may be like, hey, I'm at home, I can skip this, I this assignment. So how was it keeping them accountable to that, man? I know it had to be difficult for a little bit there. No, you know what? It, honestly, our guys are really good, and, and a big part of it is, you know, we, we kind of sift through and filter a lot of that in the recruiting process. You know, we like getting guys that care about class and, and want to be graduates and guys that uh, are high achievers. You know, they, they obviously want to succeed on the court, but they're proud of doing well in the classroom as well. So it really wasn't that difficult. You know, we, we obviously stressed the importance of making sure they were on every call and, and didn't let anything slide, but they did a very good job of of kind of self-checking themselves and making sure that they finish strong. Most definitely. And how did you guys manage where some of them couldn't work out in the summertime or do anything basketball-wise? So how did you kind of manage that with your young men, kind of keep them in some kind of semi-shape until they got back to you? So how, how did that go for you guys over the spring and summer here? Yeah, it, it was tough. You know, we were able to get our guys back in the middle of the summer, uh, and, and we had to really gradually work our way back into the gym. Uh, you know, we had to do a lot of our training, our strength and conditioning outside uh, for the first month or so, which, you know, was, was interesting and it was new. And I think that newness made it pretty fresh for the guys and it kept them focused. Um, but again, they, they took a really workmanlike approach to the way of, of the individual workouts that we had to start with. One ball, one basket. And then we gradually, as we proved that we could maintain our health, we were able to get more and more guys in there. Um, to the point where today, you know, on October 14th, we had our first official practice with our full squad in the gym. So uh, it, it wasn't easy, but, you know, it was one of those things where we knew other people were dealing with a lot of the same stuff. Uh, so, you know, we, we didn't feel sorry for ourselves or make excuses, and we just kept working. Most definitely, and I feel like it's good that the season starts at the 25th, so we got – six weeks away from it getting started. So I know you don't want to avoid those soft tissue injuries that the guys can get nag them all year long. So is the ramp up being kind of gradual and slow, even though you got them all on the court together, maybe just shooting drills and not so much up and downs so you avoid that nagging ankle or needed to go, that's the way all year long. No, you, you hit it on the head. That was one of the big things that we recognized as we watched um, EuroLeague soccer, to be honest, as it was coming back, there was a lot of soft tissue injuries, a lot of hamstring injuries. Uh, and guys that were dealing with that. So we really kind of systematically built out our approach and, and took our time getting back our cardio and our strength. And that was our main focus for about the first six weeks. Um, very light basketball, you know, uh, shooting, skill stuff, but not a lot of contact. We really wanted to make sure our bodies were back in shape before we got back to the basketball. And for you, Coach Gold, you know, you know year one, over 20 wins year one. How did it make you feel for the first time here, coach, getting 20 wins in year one, which is rare than D1 to do, and the conference tough as yours. So how was that, man, finishing fifth in that conference, but being over 20 wins in year one? 
Yeah, it was, you know, I was super fortunate to be able to take over for Kyle when he, when he left to go to Washington State because the program was really, really healthy. And, and to credit to my staff, too, for being able to keep this group together because uh, we, we thought we would have a good team if we were able to do that, and we did. And, uh, you know, we had some ups and we had some downs. And, you know, I was really proud of the way we sustained. And, uh, you know, w- when we hit the rough patches, we didn't let it affect us too strongly. And, and that's, you know, we were playing our best basketball at the end of the season. I think we won five out of our last six games. Uh, as we were gearing up to go to the NIT. So, um, you know, I learned a lot. Uh, there, were, there were times where I felt really confident, and there were times where I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. But at the end of the day, it felt like uh, we had a pretty successful season. So uh, I, I'm just really appreciative of our administration and, and my staff. I thought my staff could do a great, great job. I, I have three really, really talented assistant coaches. And, uh, you know, just having them in practice with me every day gave me the confidence to, to really guide this program. How was it for you going through that year one? I talked about when you first got hired, the adjustment moving over, over six inches is adjustment. So how was the adjustment for you going through it? Actually, for us, we talked last year when got hired. So how was that adjustment for you, handling all the dele- delegation and staff meetings, practice plans, whereas when you're the, the guy making the call, not doing suggestions anymore, you're making the call now and pulling the trigger on these things. How was that? Yeah, it, it was. It was. there were some times where it was stressful. I, I was definitely a lot more tired this year year uh i, I kind of had to work to make sure i took care of myself and my, my body and made sure i ate right and exercised and did all these little you know self-help things to make sure that you know i was able to, to stay on my game um but again like I, I didn't change a whole lot when i got the job there was obviously some tweaks here and there some adjustments that we made within our program but um you know overall it, it was really just kind of stayed the course and and really focus on on what's important, and, and that kind of led us, and it got to be the right way. Most definitely. Now, I, I enjoy kind of catching you all late at night on the, the digital ESPN threes there, seeing you guys play. I said, right. I want to make sure I want to make sure you guys are doing because, no, for me, when you all play it's midnight of midnight in Atlanta, but I want to make sure I shut up some support and make sure I checked in on you. But I saw you had it under control. I said, yeah, he's doing a great job out there. I'm happy for it, you know. So I want to tell you, I stayed up late to watch catch you, man. I did. <laughs> I appreciate it. When, uh, back when I first got into coaching, I worked at Columbia University in New York City. And obviously, I, I played at St. Mary's. And, and now I, my wife and I used to stay up, you know, usually every Thursday and Saturday till about 1 o'clock in the morning watching the games on the West Coast. So I, I appreciate you for doing that. And I know it's not easy. Yeah, man, but I, I try to show you my support I can, man. You know, I want to make sure I'm checking on my guys I talk to in the show, man. Make sure you're doing good and make sure you're healthy, man. So I, I, I love I'm doing it, man. Good. It was fun, man. It was fun. Good. I love it. Now, Coach, let's talk to you about this, man. So the, the phenomenon of recruiting via Zoom, how was that for you this year? A lot of guys had different opinions about it. So how was it showing the campus via Zoom, getting to know guys and their families via Zoom and recruiting that way? And that's something you'll continue going forward. Nah, you know, honestly, I don't love it. I really don't. Uh, I, I really prefer to meet with, you know, these young student athletes and their families in person and, and get to spend time with them face-to-face. Uh, is it a little easier? Sure. Um, is it better? I don't think so. And, you know, as we're able to get back out in the recruiting world, you know, January 1st, as of today, uh, you know, that's something that we're going to take advantage of and and kind of go back and pound the streets and make sure we're seeing the guys we need to see and and maintain the relationships we need to maintain. So I I really don't love it, um, but it's obviously a necessary thing for us right now. Most definitely. Let me ask you this, Coach. So did it at least expand, expand your reach for you uh, to get the guys maybe you wouldn't maybe get to versus flying to them, going to see them play? Did it help in that regard a little bit for us to get the guys you might not be able to get to originally, kind of stay within a budget of recruiting? How, how did that kind of help you out a little bit there? Yeah, for sure. You know, and we do a lot of stuff internationally. So I think that was, that was you know, beneficial that way. Uh, you know, not, not having to make trips across the water and just doing it, you know, like this. Um, so, yeah, in, in that frame, um, it definitely made executing some of the recruiting tasks that we have, you know, a little easier. Now, schedule-wise, I know you put in the West Coast Conference, you know, you don't want to play with so many guarantee games as guys look in different conferences, but how does it kind of schedule with games during the quarantine rules in different states and having contracts for MTEs and stuff like this? How has it been trying to get games with two weeks gone that you used to have to play these kind of games now November 25th is the start date how has that been trying to fit those in along with getting ready for the WCC which is coming up is going to be tough as well 
Yeah, you know what? It's been it's been one of the biggest challenges, to be honest. You know, I thought uh, you know Jonathan Sapphire, our director of operations, did a really good job this summer getting our schedule put together, and uh, we had some really really good games on there that we were that were going to challenge us and give us opportunities to get important wins in the non league. Uh, and I think one of the unintended consequences of moving the season back those two weeks uh, was just blowing up everybody's non conference schedule. You know, most of the other teams and coaches that I've spoken to basically started fresh you know they had 15 or 13 or maybe 11 non-conference games scheduled and they've just kind of been building from the ground up and that's what we've done uh and again you know in these circumstances it it wasn't easy but i'm happy with our how our non-conference is shaping up we're going to go out to the elevate hoops mte in nebraska uh we're going to play lsu and will wade's group out there which will be a really really good game for us and, and pick up two other games out there um, and then, you know, we still, we're going to play at Cal in the non-conference, you know, they're just a 30 minute drive over the, the Bay bridge. And, and we have a couple other games that we're really close to signing, um, that I'm excited about. So we'll, we'll get to our 11 non-league games, which is our max here in the West coast conference. And, uh, you know, knowing that it's going to be, uh, an interesting season and there might be some postponements and there might be some things to shake it up. We, we feel like we're doing everything we can to give ourselves the best chance to be successful. Now, Coach, you saw an organization here after what's been going on in our country, Coach Coalition for Progress. So how, how tell me how you that how did start that start that organization? Who was all a part of it? And what are you, you guys' mission here going forward? Yeah, uh, you know what? It was it's one of the things that, that I'm most proud of over the last six months. Um, and really with everything that was going on socially, uh, uh, a lot of the unrest across the country, a lot of the issues um, that some of the people of our country were having with police officers. And, you know, I I just felt like there were a lot of people that were unhappy uh, with the direction that our country was headed. And and so I took it upon myself, along with Vinny McGee, who coaches with me here at San Francisco. uh, We got together and and we just said, hey, you know, let's let's do something where we can, you know, focus on bringing people together. You know, and I think that's what uh, really is getting lost right now is there's a lot of division out there in the United States. And whether it's political parties or, you know, beliefs based off religion uh, you know, racial beliefs, whatever it may be. Uh, I, I'm concerned because I feel like that gap is widening. Mm-hmm. And so what I wanted to do with, with Vinny and then Carlin Hartman, who's a great dear friend of mine in Oklahoma, and, and AJ Co- Andrew Cooper, who coaches football up at Washington State, who's the best man at my wedding, and then Kevin Hovde and Jonathan Sapphire from my staff. Our whole focus was, hey, let's, let's try to bring people together and raise some money to give back to our underserved communities and try to level the playing field for some of these young kids growing up who might not have all the resources they need to be successful. So it's kind of a two pronged approach. We've also had, uh, you know, building community relationships is a big part of our coalition. So we've had police officers from, uh, you know, the Bay area come and speak to our team and kind of address them in regards to some of the issues that are going on and kind of give their perspective as well. Um, Because, you know, obviously a lot of what we see on TV is the worst of police officers. Uh, but, you know, there, there's a lot of great cops as well. And, and I think it was important for our young men to, to meet some of those individuals who are putting their lives on the line to protect us. And, and so they could understand, hey, everything we see on TV is some of that. Is, is that true? Sure. Are there also great people out there that are protecting us? Yes. And, and I think it's important that our young men get an unbiased perspective and they're able to make those decisions uh, by themselves. So, uh, you know, really just trying to strengthen those community relationships. We want to get more into the community when, you know, COVID kind of takes more of a backseat, hopefully over the next couple of months. And uh, again, we're excited to kind of donate uh, the money we've raised to some underserved communities with athletic supplies and academic equipment to better serve these young uh, men and women, well, you know, boys and girls really in their academic endeavors as they try to uh, close the gap and give themselves a better opportunity to be successful as they get older. I love my sports because Golden is this sports brings us, us together. Like, you know, for me, I was seven years old. I met my first white kid. I switch it's travel baseball. That's how I met a white kid for the first time in my life. Living in Atlanta, I didn't meet any white kids since I was seven years old playing travel baseball. So sports always, for me, brought me to different cultures, different people, different backgrounds, because sports has been what showed me about life in the world. It got me to go play in college. It's got me in radio. So sports has shown me how connected with all different kinds of people for all walks of life. And I feel like your organization is so good because you're trying to bring us all together. Because we're more closer than we are apart. That's what people don't realize. 
We're more closer than we are apart. No. And sports is a good no. vehicle to bring people together because we all can cheer for that common goal, that common color, that common team to win a game. I feel like he brings us together so, on so many ways, Coach. Hey, you, you hit it on the head, brother. And, you know, for me growing up, you know, sports was, was a great unifier. And as you said, you know, I, I, I feel like at the age of 35, you know, I, I've been playing – uh, you know, sports with people that are different than myself my whole life, you know, so I, I feel very comfortable, uh, you know, I've always had minority teammates. And so I, I don't really feel like I've ever seen color, but then you go and you look out there in the public spectrum and you do understand that, all right, there are some people across this country who really have not been around people that don't look like themselves. And so when they see each other, it might not, they might not be as comfortable and they haven't had those experiences, but man, you hit it on the head. Sports is something that is just so important, uh, not only to the identity of the country, but it is a great uh, unifier. It's the great equalizer. It doesn't matter whether you're white, black, yellow, purple. That score is going to start 0-0 at the beginning of the game. Yes. And whatever team wins, wins. And uh, it's, it's something that's you know, been great for me as an individual. And now I'm just trying to pass it down to my players and then to people in the younger generation as they come up. And, and hopefully we can kind of continue to bridge that gap. Yes, indeed. Like I said, you know, for me, Coach, I've been inspired to use my show as a better platform to talk about social issues and do something for the community. Like, Coach, I'll be honest with you, we got voting here in Georgia going on right now. I'm giving people snacks and drinks. When I'm doing interviews, we get out people snacks, drinks, and sit in line to vote because I feel like that's important because I want to get encourage them that, hey, it's important that you go out here and vote. So I want to help you. Use my show, to my sponsor, to help you out by giving you food and drinks while you sit in line. So I've been inspired to use my show as a platform now going forward to help people in this community of Atlanta and beyond because it's that important to me now. 33 years old, Coach, you're 35. We can make a difference in this country. So us millennials do care about the country. We can Get the job done for sure. <laughs> I mean, what you're saying is so true, JR. And like, we, we're doing the same with our group. You know, we, we made it a mandate within our program for our young men to register to vote. And we're not going to talk to them and try to guide them in regards to which way we want them to vote. But we want to educate them so they understand the value of voting. And the val- that's one of the biggest freedoms we have, right, is to go out and, and place our vote for whatever man or woman we feel like is best uh, to sit in that chair, whether it's the presidency or the local elections, which, to be honest, in some cases are more important yes. than the presidential race. And, you know, just uh, for our young men within our program to understand the power that they have, their constitutional right to go out and vote, it's, uh, it's one of the most important things we can do. Most definitely. I've been so inspired, Coach Golden, by what's been going on in this country. You know, my mom and dad were, grew up in the 60s, so they were, was around Martin Luther King, and they was around those marches. So, you know, my fam, my fam, my parents were, were from that era. They bought their parents there in the 70s. So my parents, I, I, I was one of those menopause babies, as they say. <laughs> so I always wanted to be here. <laughs> you, you know, so they're older, so they tell me about the story. So for me to be able to use my platform that I have here and be able to make a difference, Coach, it's so heartwarming. It feels good to be able to help the community, help the city of Atlanta, help the people of Georgia grow and, and move forward and not get stuck in a, in a rut and say we can move this situation this, this here forward. Like like you said, local minds what is federal because like mass mandates here in Georgia are not a thing, you know? So you're right. It matters more locally than it does on the federal level for sure. Yeah, there's no doubt. And I think it's uh... – Again, the best we can do is try to educate people within our platform and and just create that opportunity and understanding of our rights. And and if people choose to take advantage of it, great. And if they don't, that's their decision. Got that right. Coach Golden, thank you for your time, man. As always, good to catch up with you. I'll be cheering for you again this year. I'll be catching you late night once more, man. Hoping you guys get those wins out there. And the WCC, man, for sure. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some earlier games so you don't have to stay up so late this year. But I appreciate you having me on. It's always great catching up with you, man. And uh, reach out if you ever need anything out west, okay? No, Dave, it's good to see you this time, too. Good to see you while we talk to you. I'm on the phone. <laughs> awesome, bro. Hey, you stay safe out there, okay? You too now, Coach. Be good, man. All right. Take, take care. All right, now. See you. Grab a hold of big breakfast flavor at Hardee's. Try two breakfast sliders for just $2.99. Get Applewood smoked bacon or freshly grilled sausage with fluffy eggs and golden melty cheese all on a toasty little bun. Good morning, start at Hardee's. Available now for a limited time at participating restaurants. Tax not included.
All right, folks, back here on the Boss Man Show. Here with Coach Tick Parsons of the Lamar Carter out of the Southland Conference. Coach Parsons, how's life treating you guys down there in great Texas, man? <laughs> well, between uh, evacuating, we had two uh, hurricanes to come through. Uh, we survived that. Uh, and then uh, you had to get out of town because uh, running from the hurricane, between that and COVID-19, Basketball season seems to be pretty simple, man. You got there. Well, I was going to ask you about the. I was asking about the hurricanes that came through there. I know that was a rough time for you guys, and uh, you know, during COVID too, you can't really be congregated together to evacuate. So, how was yeah. that whole process dealing with those hurricanes that came through there the last few weeks there? Well, we had to evacuate for Hurricane Law, the first one. So that was a week missing our workouts. Then we got back. Uh, then we had to quarantine our guys for like two weeks. We uh, got we had three guys exposed, uh, so we had to uh, quarantine uh, them. And then we had a couple test positive for, for COVID. So then we had to quarantine the whole team. So we missed three weeks of preparation, man. And uh, we know we can't get it all back in one practice, uh, but it really have eaten into our preparation and and planning moving forward. So we just got to uh, do the best we can uh, with the idea uh, one step at a time, one day at a time, and in hopes that by November the 25th, if that takes place, uh, we'll have most of our stuff in if, uh, and maybe have a group of guys that we feel that we can trust putting them in a the game to put us in a position to win those games. Coach Price, with those two weeks getting cut off of the non-conference schedule, how has it been trying to schedule these games and dealing with quarantines in different states and trying to get guaranteed games, not go too far, knowing you can't really get on airplanes like you want to? So how yeah. has that been trying to get this schedule done with November 25th starting here and two weeks getting cut off of that, that period we can play non-conference games and make money for the university? Well, you know what? Some of the Power 5 game teams – uh, have uh, one cut their guarantees, uh, so we don't we won't get as much money. Some of them have cut those games completely, and so that caused us to scramble. Even right now in November, we still trying to get in uh, in October. We still trying to get games uh, for our start date in November, uh, and then we've had some maybe a couple non. D1s that we've scheduled at home, they can't play because they can't afford to test three times a week. That's part of uh, the process and us playing our opponents. So we kind of been in scramble mode. So I have quite a few other Division One uh, teams that depend on some of those guarantee games to play, pay the bills. I've seen some of them contracts, Coach, and I saw the COVID clauses in them where they pretty much yeah. paying, you, paying you to travel. And, like, it's not worth my while for you to come pay me to play you and just to travel. I, I need something to build for my athletic department. So I don't yeah. blame you to going for those, the okie doke because I sure wouldn't do it. But I've seen some of them contracts, man. They a joke. Yeah. Well, they have put uh, language in those contracts that protect the teams that, that's paying teams to come in. One, you got to uh, test three times a week prior to that game. Uh, and in some cases, some of the Power 5 teams have now gone to uh, having a bubble. And that bubble can affect the, the date that you may be playing other teams. So with that being said, then you don't get to play uh, maybe some of those Power 5 teams. There's it, so many things, so many moving parts that's going on right now, man. You have to be flexible. Uh, you have to have patience. And uh, you also got to make sure uh, you keep in mind the number one priority, and that's the uh, health and safety of your players. Most definitely, Coach. Let's go back to March 11th. That's my birthday uh, when everything kind of went crazy. I'm at the, the Hawks-Knicks yeah. Hawks -Nick -Nick game, and I get a text saying <laughs> the season's going to be suspended on my birthday. Yeah. I'm working, and then, you know, everything kind of goes down the tube here. So where, where was your team at on doing that March 11th week, uh, and then having to go home virtually, finish out the semester? So how was that, Coach, for you and your staff and your players dealing with going from being on campus at Lamar that had been back at home trying to finish out the semester and stay safe? 
Well, we were in the midst of playing in the second round of our conference tournament. We had just had a good win the night before in the first round against McNeese. And uh, we were getting ready to uh, prepare for Nickel State uh, the next night. Actually, we were in shoot around. And I got a call from my athletic director that uh, all games would be suspended for the tournament and that we were to go home. And so uh, I immediately huddled my team up and told them uh, we would not be playing a tournament the rest of the way. Uh, I felt bad for the seniors. They, they, their whole demeanor looked like you let the air out of them. So they didn't get a chance, man, to at least finish their senior se- uh, season a fair chance to compete for a championship. That's what they played hard for. And we were playing well at that time. Uh, but, again, uh, we got to make sure that those kids are uh, in good health. And uh, that's more important than a, than a basketball. So we packed up, loaded the bus, and headed back to uh, Beaumont, Texas. And at that time, it was spring break. And so I told all of them go home and uh, spend time with their families. I'm going to get back. Hopefully, we could uh, maybe come up with a solution to COVID-19. That was back in March, and we still haven't come up with a solution. You got that right. Well, I'm still, <laughs> hey, uh, unfortunately, Coach, you know, I live in Georgia, live in Texas. So, you know, our states don't too much care for science, so <laughs> we know how it's going right now. <laughs> I, I know, man. It's It's been a crazy time uh, because you don't know how to, to plan from day to day. Uh, you don't know if your season's going to take place. Uh, if a kid catches uh, – COVID-19 during the year, then that means that uh, your other players might have to quarantine for 14 days. So now you might have to postpone three games because everybody's quarantined, including the coach. So it's going to be a crazy time for us. Hopefully we can have a basketball season. Everybody can stay healthy. Uh, They got right now on the table, the officials will have to use a mask to call the game and they have an electronic uh, whistle uh, to use to to call the games. And so wow. there's a lot of things that's going on right now for college basketball. Now, Coach, I want to keep your guys in shape. Did you all send them things over via the Zoom and FaceTime over the summertime and spring to kind of keep them in semi-shape for doing what they can do at home? Some of them have, have hoops and out in their backyards to be able to get to a gym. Did you all kind of keep them in semi-shape with little exercises here and there with your strength coach to kind of keep them so they won't come back We have those horrible soft tissue or nagging injuries that you last all year long? Yeah, we did. We sent each guy a workout program. And then uh, we asked those guys to send us uh, some video of their workouts. Uh, We didn't get all the workouts. Some of them didn't go through, wasn't being pushed to where they need to be so they could be in shape when they got back. So that was an extra burden on us once they get back. And we got to work to get them in shape. And so that's kind of what phase we in right now. They can't play Division I basketball if you're not in good shape. So we're having to cover, put in a few things uh, in, in terms of uh, what we want to do defensively, uh, some some plays that we want to use offensively, but at the same time try to do conditioning as well. Uh, this is uh, – and there are other teams going through very similar problems. So this is going to be a very challenging year for us all. Most definitely. Now, Coach, as far as on the Zoom calls this offseason, how do you use your platform and talk to young men about what's going on in our country? Because I know, you know, I'm in my 30s, your guys in their 20s and their teens. So, you know, having, knowing what's going on and seeing what's going on with them, how do you use that, your time with your young men to keep their minds stimulated and engaged and understand that, hey, we just surprised our country are coming to roost again and that we ain't make a change about this. And how do you kind of inspire them in, in, in that regard? Well, I mean, I can t- – I can tell them back, I take them back and and bring them all the way up to now about how uh, black folk has been treated unjustly, uh, how hatred has caused uh, parties to not come together but stay apart. Uh, And I tell them every day 
uh, how important it is, one, to vote. Um, our, our whole team will vote just like most teams in the country. We'll take that one day off. I think it's November the 3rd. To use that day with no practice, but take the whole team to vote. And we got all of our guys registered this summer. Uh, so we uh, plan to exercise uh, this right. And I also have to give them uh, some education on why you're voting. Uh, we have done that. Uh, I tell them, vote, and the choice is yours. Don't vote, is, and the choice is theirs. And so I try to emphasize to them, your vote is your voice. And uh, we uh, start looking at early voting. November the 3rd, I think it's going to be a lot of folk waiting at last minute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're trying to look at uh, the early voting option as well as November 3rd option. But we're all going to vote. That's for sure. Most definitely. I know here in Georgia, people are waiting eight, nine hours to vote here in Georgia. That's oppression stuff. And it's sad, you know, that I can go. I live in the suburbs and I can see how quick it is out here in the suburbs. But in the city of Atlanta, They are hit there and then the rain and the wind and then whatever, eight, nine hours. That's a whole day of work with some people, Coach. That's a that's a day of work with some people. They missing pay just to exercise the right to vote, which I'm glad they're doing it, but it shouldn't be that way. <laughs> you know, it is sad yeah. to say. Yeah, it is. Uh, but, you know, kudos to those people who wait until the time is uh, to vote. If they spend eight hours, if it takes ten hours, stay there. Do that uh, because – this is probably one of the most important elections in the history uh, of politics. And if, if we don't vote, then there's a chance that um, things are not going to get better, plain and simple. And I can tell you, Coach, I can tell you this, Coach, you know, our station here and my show is we have sponsors that we're giving people food and drinks and giving them, sure. while they're in line, and Christian stay in line, because like you said, Coach, it's so important, you know, I know you're, you're the age of the group where my parents are. And I, I grew up here in Atlanta, when I was segregated here in Atlanta. So they told me all about the stories, how they wanted to vote, how they fought the right to vote, and, for, you know, for freedom and segregating schools. So me being in my 30s, I, I, my parents have told me, I know it's real. And I don't want to see us slip back to the time of my parents when you and y'all were growing up because I know how what y'all have told me, I know how it is. And I don't want that to happen yeah. for my people now, so I'm trying to do that again with, the, with this show and our station here to get people food, drinks, keep them encouraging lines so they don't leave and stay there. Unfortunately, wait that long. We got, we will try to help you and encourage you and keep you nourished while you're there. Well, and, and you know, while we try to educate um, our student athletes to vote, we also got to educate them on looking at uh, everything that's going on around us. There are politicians that's trying to suppress the vote by uh, putting only one booth in, the, in one whole county. I mean, it's crazy. Or they trying to say, uh, to send your vote in the mail, there's a chance that it could be tampered with or you can vote two times, all kinds of negative thoughts. But, you know, don't be discouraged. Let's go ahead and do what we're supposed to do. Let's take care of our business and make sure that our voices are heard. Most definitely, Coach. Now, Coach, you're going to your eighth year at Lamar. Does it feel like you've been there that long, Coach? They've been there eight years. Does it feel, does it feel like it? Is it all just fl- fl- flowing by for you? Yeah, it has. Uh, you know, I've been real fortunate, man. I'm, <clears throat> I'm in, a, in a good situation. Uh, I work with some good people. My president and AD has been very supportive. Uh, our fans, uh, probably some of the most loyal fans in our conference, uh, I've been surrounded by some good players and, and that basically not giving me any trouble off the court. Man, I've I've been blessed. Every one of the kids that I've coached that have exhausted their ed, uh, eligibility, I've gotten a degree. So that's a hundred percent graduation rate. To me, that's a blessing, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. So these kids, they get it. They're trying to prepare for life after basketball. And we're trying to prepare them uh, when they leave school and try to help them. If basketball is not part of their future, they still got their degree and they still can be successful. 
Most definitely, Coach. And I feel that's the biggest important part is being a student athlete part because that degree can't take, take you places because, you know, yeah. like you said, for me, the, the basketball court stopped for me. I ended up getting yeah. into the media, right? So that degree helped me to do what I'm doing today. I'm an example of that. So the fact that you care about your young men getting a degree, which is very important, and make them also great husbands and fathers and as they – go through their life journey. I mean, it's amazing, Coach, that you know, you've done for young men from your days at Memphis and Magnets, wherever you've been, you've impacted young men's lives. And that's, so I would commend you for that, Coach. And I watched you, I told you last year, I watched you from afar and I was known about it. But it's, I just want to tell you again, it's, it's amazing to see what you do for young men like my, I, I, just like me who are growing up like me. So I thank you so much for what you do, do for these young men, Coach. Well, I appreciate you saying that. But that's part of the responsibility of being a coach. You don't just coach basketball, you teach them uh, life, life's preparing with life skills and hope that when they leave you, uh, they'll be ready for the challenges of life. Most definitely. Now, Coach, for my listeners out here who really don't know about the South Carolina, like I know about the South Conference, tell them about how tough this conference is, Coach. Like, you got some great coaches in your conference, great teams. Tell them, listen, about how tough this conference is, man, how it's going to be this year. Well, it is every year. Every night, it's no easy out. Man, every night is a fight. <laughs> uh, we've got some outstanding coaches in our legs. And, uh, take, for instance, Stephen F. Austin, go to Duke last year and walk away with a win, one of the biggest upsets in college basketball. Stephen F. Austin, not many people go in the Cameron uh, Fieldhouse and, and walk out of there with a win. Yes. Stephen F. Austin did that. Uh, but they've got some players, and they're well coached. Uh, Sam Houston, uh, Jason Hooten has done a good job over there. Year in and year out, <clears throat> they're in the hunt for a championship. Willis Wilson over at Texas Corpus Christi, same thing. I mean, we have got a conference where you have got to be pre prepared, uh, know your scouting report, and uh, you can't take a night off. Do you going to? leave after that 40 minute with an L and that's just the way it is. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the one bit league. And so teams play with that kind of chip on their shoulders. Oh, they want to make sure they get to the dance. So that's a, uh, a feel for urgency every time you step between the lines. And coach, you know what people really don't realize is outside of Baylor, Texas and Tech TCU, Man, there's some dogs in the other conference with North, North Texas, <laughs> yeah. UTEP, you know, UTSA. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's some dogs. Texas State down there as well. So, to tell Texas has so many great programs, and it's a tough hour in that state every night. The basketball in D1 in Texas is one of a kind. So many schools in one state, man. You, I mean, it's just up and down the state, east, west, wherever you are, it's a tough battle no matter what you're going to do. Yeah. I mean, you got to. One, you got to be able to recruit the state. You got to know people. Uh, you got to have some contacts. Uh, I think these kids in Texas, that in the past, have gotten out, gotten out of the state going to other schools, but now they tend to want to stay at home. Uh, and so, with that being said, a lot of schools are capitalized, capitalizing from this. Uh, in particular, North Texas, uh, that team has really done well. SMU, they raised their game, man. They, they're they good. TCU, Jamie Dixon has gone over there and, and turned that thing into a powerhouse. Uh, I mean, you just never know uh, in the state uh, what team is going to be a dominant team because there's so much parity in the state of Texas in college basketball. I got for you, Coach, is a recruiting question. How has it been recruited via Zoom and show guys the campus via Zoom and do virtual recruiting? I know you probably want to be in a home with a parent and a kid, but doing it via Zoom, how's that experience been? Is that something you keep doing going forward? Well, you know what? You have to adjust to the times, man. I mean, I personally like to be – I like face-to-face -face interaction with people, sit in the living room with the parents, uh, but that's not possible. And so you got to come up with creative ways on your Zoom call to capture that kid's attention. Uh, for instance, you got to have a, a virtual uh, visit where you take the kid on a campus tour. Uh, now, you got to not just take him on the tour, but you got to make it exciting that you can capture his imagination on that tour. 
you show them your facilities. Uh, your assistant coaches have got to be able to uh, create an image that speak volumes to a kid. And then, of course, I've, I've got to try to close a deal on a phone call or a Zoom call, and which makes it very difficult. Most definitely. With Coach Price, well, I'm hoping more guys from the Atlanta come your way. They play for you. They help pay for a great man, a great coach. So, Coach, thanks for talking, coming on the show again. I do this again real soon. I'll be definitely cheering for the Lamar Cardinals and you, man, this year for, for, for sure in that conference, man. Hey, man, I enjoyed seeing you again, man. And, uh, look, you up in Texas, come see us. Hey, Coach, as soon as I know the schedule with the Hawks, you got All right, I'm, I'm, good. This, hey, are you close to Houston or Dallas or San Antonio? Which one are you closest to? Or New Orleans? I'm close to, I'm close to Houston. I'm about an hour and a half from from Houston. Okay, we got that rocket schedule. I'll let you know. And I'll, I'll make that drive over to see you, Coach. All right, sounds good. You're welcome anytime. Thanks, Coach. Coach Price, have a good one, buddy. All right, thank you, man. No problem. It's Keith Price on the Boss Man Show. Sally Beauty's new all-in-one hair color kits make it easy to color your hair at home. Get everything you need to color for beautifully radiant results. Loved by professionals, open to everyone. Sally Beauty. All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show with Coach Joe Golden, Evelyn Christian Wildcats. Coach, how's life over there in West Texas, man? Man, we're surviving. We're making it. Um, you know, each day is a different day. Obviously, we're we're in this uh, COVID uh, America, and um, you know, you think you got it figured out one day, and you got a schedule, and then the next day everything changes. So, um, you know, it's um, it's the same out here that it, that it is everywhere. Um, we, we obviously have our cases, and uh, we just um, just uh, honestly, man, just trying to keep our kids safe and and, and uh, keep our our students safe that are here on campus, and do everything we can to protect each other. Carlos, can you believe it's going to your 10th year at Abilene Christian? Can you believe it, man? Has it, has, has it flown by for you? I'm telling you what, look at me now. Since you've met me a couple years ago, I look, I, I've aged a bunch, man. You know, this has got to be a better profession out there. Look good to me, coach. Look good to me, buddy. <laughs> Words of wisdom. Don't ever take a job that transitions to Division One, man. It will age you quick. But I actually just had my 45th birthday uh, yesterday, so um, – you know, I, I'm very fortunate. You know, uh, we all know in coaching, man, um, you don't have the opportunity usually, A, to, to come back to the place you played at, uh, and then, B, to, to stay long at a place. It's just uh, in the world we're living in today in athletics, uh, sometimes you're, you, you, you don't get a long tenure uh, at, 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 a, at a place. And so I'm very fortunate uh, to have the opportunity to raise my family and to coach at a place that I went to school. And um, it, it, it's it's – I wouldn't say it's flown by. Those those first five or six years were tough and long um, and a lot of butt whoopings. But the last three years has been very enjoyable. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine transition from D1 from to D1 from where you're coming from. I can only imagine. That. I'm going to be talking to Dick, Coach and Dick, Coach Judkins at Dick City State. I'm going to talk to him about that next week. So I, I can only imagine what all that goes through. You can't go play tournaments. You got your limited. Oh, Ah, uh, trust me, Coach. I, you made through that, 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 that tunnel for sure. Tell him not to call me, man. I don't got any advice. I put that away. <laughs> I, I sure will, man. I sure will, man. So, Coach, I'll tell you off the air about, you know, for me in March 11th was, was my last day working, Knicks Hawks game, and I know it's around time you guys have tournaments. So, that whole week, how was it for you guys going from preparing for a tournament to – going home and not coming back until just recently now. And so how did that whole process go for your team going from in that mode of playing to at home and not knowing what next step is going to be? Yeah, you know, uh, it was, it was, um, it was, it was very difficult. You know, the hardest thing I think I've had to do with the team um, and it was, uh, I don't know if we did it right, to be honest with you. I don't know if anybody knew what was going on. You know, we just tried to stay in the moment with our players and, and, we didn't know anything, just like I don't think the country had any idea of what, you know, we went to bed. We actually got down to our, our conference tournaments in Katy, Texas. Um, we got, we finished second in the league, so we got the double bye. So we weren't going to play until, um, I guess, Friday. Uh, so we got down there Tuesday night, we're going to practice, uh, or maybe we got down there Wednesday, we're going to practice Thursday. And then that night is when the uh, the NBA shut down. You know, you could kind of see it happening, and then the, the, they canceled the games and everybody was doing So you knew going to bed that night that, 
uh, it just wasn't going in the right direction. And then uh, we actually had games being played that day with fans. Oh, wow. uh, and, and they had told us the next day uh, that there was going to be just family involved. You know, the past wasn't going to allow the whole general public into the tournament. But then that morning, you know, you could see the big, the big power fives were starting to cancel. And so at that point, we kind of knew where this was headed. We were actually headed to practice uh, and we never got on the bus. We ended up uh, calling everybody down to the, to the hotel, to our conference room. And uh, we just had a, we had a meeting and, and uh, we were just honest with them, boss man. You know, we just uh, told them we didn't know what was going on. Um, but that, uh, you know, obviously this season was probably over. Uh, we weren't going to play obviously the conference tournament. We didn't think there was going to be any postseason. And uh, it was real emotional, you know, for those seniors, I think it was the first time ever when you're a senior, you always either, you know, whatever, 15 kids probably win the last game, you know, in division one, but everybody else, you put that uniform on and you know, when you take it off after you got beat, that's the last time you're ever going to put that uniform on. And, and our seniors didn't have the opportunity to do that, you know, so, um, we, we let them address our team and kind of told, uh, you know, they were able to share stories of their journey and, and everything they had done in our program and kind of celebrated those seniors because I kind of felt in that they had played their last, you know, last opportunity. So it was emotional. Uh, I felt for those kids, you know, you put so much at our level in a one bid league, everything goes into to that one week in March. Yes, you know, indeed. The opportunity. So we have all as a staff and players had worked hard and then all of a sudden it's taken away, but obviously they made the right decision looking back now on what we're all having to deal with. Uh, it was the right decision. And, um, we came back and we got our team back here and we actually had just got an email from our president that said that we were going to have an extended week for spring break. So we told him, Hey, you never had spring break in the last couple of years. So go have fun. We'll see you in a week. Uh, and we'll regroup here and, and figure it all out. And, you know, that was the last time we saw him again until, until mid July. So, um, it, it, uh, it all happened fast. Uh, it, it was uh, very difficult to deal with. And, uh, Obviously, we missed seeing our guys. You know, I had no idea we wouldn't see them again until July, and nor did I think right now, you know, in October the 16th, we would still be dealing with it like we are. So it's just – it's been crazy times. I told you, Coach, I haven't left Atlanta since March, you know. So I haven't left town since March, man. So I, I can't go see anybody practicing right now because they, they're not letting media in or they're not even letting guys on – just who do you know in? So like, if you're not part of the program, you can't go check out practice right now. So I like to go look at practice. I can't go do that right now because of, of course, you know, the virus. I can only imagine not seeing, seeing guys off spring break and all of a sudden, July. Hey, now I see you again. <laughs> like, you didn't sign up for that for sure. Yeah, no, it's been, it's been really difficult. But it was great to see him in July. You know, obviously, we, you, you – uh, you know, we enjoy, if you're in this business, you enjoy being around kids and building relationships and turning these guys into men. And when all of a sudden it's taken away from you, I think we, we take each day for granted. We definitely learned around here that, that you can't do that, you know. And so it was great to get them back here. And we've been fortunate that our university has come back in, in, in person um, here in, in the fall. And so it looks different, obviously, you know. Uh, everybody's got masks on and there's social distance classrooms. And there's Obviously, it, it doesn't have the same feel, but at least it's it's good to see some energy back around campus. Now, Coach Golden, and looking at you academically, how was that for your young man going from being on in person to virtual? Cause I know that's hard for a young man who's not used to that going from at your own home, home on your own devices, you know, the new environment. So, how's that academically for your young man trying to finish that semester out in the spring there, being back home? Well, you know, first of all, if you and I were smart on March 11th, we'd have bought some stock in Zoom, man. And I probably wouldn't be coaching here anymore. I'd, I'd be out on my – had my beach bar already out. out and be done coaching. But, uh, you know, I, uh, here's a funny story on that, too. We told our guys, you know, they had an extra week of spring break. And so uh, once we found out we were going all online to finish it, uh, I would say, uh, you know, the majority of our guys left all their books – and, you know, all, everything here. And so uh, we had to mail their books to them. We had to get them their back, all their supplies. And, and of course, they had their phone and their laptop. They don't go anywhere today, uh, you know, without that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to deal with that. And then, you know, just getting them out of their dorms, all their all – their, their, I mean, it was just – it was a mess. But um, our staff did a great job of, of getting that to them. And then uh, we just basically um, – would touch base with them through Zoom, and then obviously they did their classwork on Zoom, and uh, it was definitely di uh, different uh, than anything they've been through. Um, and uh, but but our professors did a really good job of here with some patience with our guys and and, and with the rest of the student body um, as well, and we were able to survive it. You know, our guys were all able to academically be great. Uh, we had a great semester. Um, and, um, you know, we're able to, to, to navigate and figure it out. But I think every university did a great job. At, everybody did, 
they were different probably uh, on how they did it, but um, it, you know, our, guy, our guys were able to survive and do it. They were, we'd have to call them in the morning, still like always, and make sure they got up, and we'd have to check and make sure that they were on Zoom and they weren't laying in bed without their video on. We'd make them turn their video on on the Zoom, and uh, and so I think moms and dads got got also had the opportunity to see what we deal with every day. I, with, right. uh, <laughs> sure. so I think that probably helps us now when we call in. They know what we're dealing with. <laughs> You got there right, and then that coach. Now you got back in July, so how's that been trying to trying to get the guys round back up? Because you don't have those soft tissue injuries and you have nag all your long or get a knee or an ankle or something that just doesn't ever goes away. So how's that, that ramp up being getting the guys back in shape so they can get ready for November twenty fifth here coming up in a, in a month or so here. Yeah, you know, I think we're still trying to navigate it and figure that out because it's different than it's been any season. But I, I do think uh, we're trying to be careful with that. Uh, in July, we were real careful. We got them back just slowly progressing to, to getting back. We did a lot of group work and a lot of individual work, um, and we didn't just throw them right back into it. Uh, and we've kind of done the same thing in the fall. Uh, we started out the first couple of weeks doing a bunch of group work and then slowly went to some five on zero and then just recently uh, started doing more five on five uh, action and playing. And so, uh, you know, the, the difficult part of it is navigating, uh, you know, if guys are out because of tracing, um, the contact tracing deal, and just, you know, how many guys do you have available for practice? Uh, but I, uh, to your point, you know, usually we're get, we're amped up right now because we're ready to go here early November, and now we're not getting started till late November. And, uh, you know, I, I think you have to be really careful, um, especially if we're able and fortunate uh, to get the season in. You know, that, that's a lot of basketball now um, all the way straight through to March. So, um, and these guys haven't hooped, you know, like you said, till, since March. Uh, it's been a long time. And these guys, hoopers hoop, you know. It doesn't matter yeah, if you're right. you, you know, you're at the YMCA, you're at the rec center, the outdoor park, uh, you're hooping somewhere. And these guys haven't had the opportunity to do that. You know, even in Abilene, Texas, uh, they took the goals down, you know, at the city parks. And, and there ain't a whole lot of hoopers here in Abilene, I promise you. So when they're doing that, I can imagine across the country that, you know, these kids didn't have the opportunity to go anywhere and play. And play. So, um, you know, really the last two or three weeks since we started going five on five was the first time that these guys have had the opportunity to do that since March. So I think you got to be careful. Um, you know, we, we have, we want to stay injury free and obviously we want to play our best basketball in February and March. And so uh, we're, we're making adjustments. I, I don't think we'll, we'll do it perfect, but hopefully we'll, we'll navigate that as the season goes along. Now, how was kind of coach guys on zoom just during the spring and summer here about going over the concepts, the different defenses showing the film. So how was that having them on video kind of make, see how they were looking at you, Patrick, at you and coach me go over a different defense or offense. How was that this summer? Yeah, it was definitely unique and different. I, I actually uh, told our guys, that when once it started to see it progressing that way, that we weren't going to be back for a while. I told our guys, listen, I want you to spend time with your families. You know, you don't ever get this opportunity, you know, to go back home and spend time with your mom, dad, brother, sister, grandma, everybody have fun. Um, and obviously use this time to really unite, you know, and, and stay safe during that time. And we kind of left them alone, boss, man. We didn't, you know, do a ton of Zooms with them. We obviously stay on top of them academically. Uh, but besides that, we kind of left basketball away. You know, I just wanted them to, to get away from basketball, stay safe, um, and, and spend time with their family. Um, the longer it went, then – it was like, oh, I don't know if I should have said that, you know, because yeah. you, there comes a point in time where you got you to gotta do some stuff, especially for your new players, your freshmen, you know, and, and, and your new junior college players. Uh, you want them to, to feel comfortable. So we obviously got into more of that. It, it was different. It was unique. Uh, you know, I feel now that we're comfortable on Zoom now, but back then it was really different and you never, uh, you know, you didn't know if you need to get that close to the camera, yeah. back up, how yeah. you talk, yes. you know, like, <laughs> it's just a, to, to get used to it. Um, so it, it took time. I'll tell you one thing that we've struggled with, we're really big on building relationships in our program. You know, we, yes, we, we try to do it every day, man. We, that's something that we do uh, daily. And uh, that's made it difficult with the COVID, with the Zoom. Uh, even though we're speaking to them daily, you just don't have that hands-on interaction. You know, it's not yes. – even now that they're back, you know, we can't do team functions. We can't do all the stuff that we, we, we usually do because of the COVID stuff and, and having to be six feet apart all the time. So that's, that's made it really difficult uh, for us, and we've had to navigate that because I think that's one of the most important things we've done here um, is, is really, really build, um, you know, relate. And, and people talk about that, Boston, all the time, you know, building relationships, and it kind of drives me crazy because – the, the, the coaches out there that truly do it, man, it's hard, man. It, you got to do it every single day. Yes. Uh, and, and our kids are going to see through it, you know, and, and we really take a lot of pride in that. We coach our kids really, really hard on the floor, but we love them harder off of it. And we've had to navigate that and, and, and make some adjustments. That's been tough for us. Speaking of some of your guys who came in new, talk about some of your key returners and some of your newcomers as well, Coach. We want to keep an eye on this year for you. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, we were we were fortunate uh, in, in the recruiting this year in, in the spring. We returned uh, ten guys uh, off last year's team, and so we were able to put back to back twenty win seasons together for the first time in school history. And we're returning ten of those players. Uh, and we'd already signed three guys early. So we didn't have to recruit any in the spring. So we were very fortunate yes, uh, in that during this, this COVID time. So uh, we're happy. We're excited about our team. We got a lot of pieces back. Uh, you know, we have, I think, out of 10 guys back, nine guys played uh, extended minutes for us. Um, you know, we have obviously four out of five starters back. The one player uh, that, that left us, Peyton Ricks, a senior, he was the first team all league player uh, and was our leading scorer. So uh, it's not the same team back, but we do have the majority uh, of our group back. Um, and so we're excited about that. And then we added four freshmen uh, to, to our program. Um, so we've uh, uh, two big kids, one from Minnesota and one from Oklahoma, and then a guard uh, from Hebron uh, outside of Dallas. So um, we're excited about those freshmen. I don't know uh, if we're going to need them to play immediately. Uh, I think in time, though, that they, they will be ready. But the good thing is we don't have to rush that. You know, I think we have enough guys back that we can take our time with these freshmen and uh, kind of navigate. And I think that helps them, too, during this time period of the COVID stuff uh, that, that, you know, that, that we can really, uh, uh, you know, take our time and be patient with those guys and not have to throw them in. So uh, we're excited about it. Um, you know, we're, we're, we, we pray every day. I'm hoping that, that we'll have a season. I, you know, I know our kids want to play. Uh, they're hungry to get back out there and compete. And uh, we're excited about the season and we're excited about our team. Well, I love what your roster coaches is that you can see you have nine guys returning, which tells me this year going to be about continuity. you got to have guys who know your system because if, you, if you've been together for a while and you're, you've been playing, playing to this year with the offense going around you, having that continuity is going to be very key. That's why I look at your roster. I'm like, yep, Coach Golden got something nice there because he got guys who know the system. I'm not trying to teach one on the fly here. Yeah, and I think this year that's real important. You know, to your point, I think I – think, uh, uh, just the continuity and knowing what we have in that locker room. And, and uh, you know, in a year like this, I, I think that uh, you would think the teams that have so many new pieces, you know, that, that they would struggle this time of year just because we don't have, we haven't had enough time on the floor with these guys uh, that we usually have. And so uh, we're very blessed to, to, to have a, to have a big group back. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got a, a lot of guys on, and, you know, we have a fifth year senior. We have two juniors that played a ton as freshmen on that NCAA tournament team. So we've got a lot of experience uh, in that locker room that, that I think will help us early uh, in, in the season navigate this. Because there's going to be adversity. There's going to be things that happen. Definitely. Did in the NFL, you saw it in the NBA. Uh, actually, the NBA did a great job. Uh, but, but, but um, you know, you've seen it with, with college football. Um, you know, there, there's going to be adversity. You're going to be ready to play, and it's going to get canceled, and you're going to have to handle that. And hopefully with some maturity on our, our team and some, some upperclassmen that they can handle that type of stuff. Now, Coach, being in Texas, you can probably play anybody you want to non-conference-wise and still raise the money you need, raise the money you need uh, for your university. So how has it been losing those two extra weeks to play those guarantee games and play non-conference games, maybe MTE here, here or there? So how has that been trying to put a schedule together with the two weeks being moved up to November 25th here? Yeah, it hadn't been a whole lot of fun. You know, um, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely going to be short on, on the guarantee money that we need to get each year, you know, um, you know, and, and our, our uh, athletic director and myself, we, you know, in our relationship, we have a number that we try to get to every year and we're not going to be able to get to that. You know, the, the money's just not out there. Um, so, um, you know, we're, we're having to navigate this. Obviously we threw our schedule in the trash can, uh, once they, <laughs> once they announced it, like I think everybody else did. And, uh, we lost our MTE and we lost a bunch of games. And so we've had to navigate that. Um, and we, we've, we've, uh, tried to put together the best schedule we could for our guys. Um, we, we're, we're fortunate to get an, uh, MTE, a, a really good, um, uh, one out in Florida. Um, and so I think it's going to be a bubble type of situation out there where everybody's going to get tested and have to stay in the bubble. So, uh, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to get those games in out there. And then when we come back uh, from Florida, uh, from the opening bubble, we never leave uh, Texas. Again, we're always on a bus from that point and staying right here. So, um, you know, we, we've, we, we're having to play some non-Division one games uh, that we, you know, um, to try to fit those in just to get teams to, 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 to be able to play. Uh, we were fortunate to get Arkansas and Texas Tech. I don't know if we were fortunate or unfortunate. There's two ways to look at that. Uh, I think you're fortunate because, you, <laughs> hey, you, your team will give them off some trouble. Yeah. You'll give them yeah. trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks for them, not, not you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, Arkansas is good. Uh, Muslim has done a great job there, and he's, he's uh, you know, going to be really good. And Coach Beard has done a tremendous job at Texas Tech. So, uh, and then we're actually going to play Tarleton, uh, who's just down the street right now. This will be their first year to go Division One. so with Coach Gillespie. So, um, 
hopefully we'll get as many of those games in, uh, but we're trying to keep our guys in safe environments at the same time and, and uh, trying to make it to conference season, obviously in January with our whole team healthy and, and, and ready to compete. That's what I got for you, Coach Sims. Give us a story about our, our mutual friend, Brian Burton. Let's give you something about Coach Burton, man. That's, that's, that's my buddy, too, man. Tell me a little something about, about Brian Burton here, Coach Goldie. <laughs> I'll tell you what, boss, man, we can do a whole show on Brian Burton, man. I don't know if he'd like all the stuff we could air out there, man, but I think we could raise the ratings a little bit, man. So, uh, do it. But, you know, uh, Burton's been a great friend of mine for, for a long time, and we worked together at Calm County. He was actually the assistant. Uh, I was actually just a radio guy, a uh, TV guy, trying to trying to make enough money to survive to get in the business at that time. And uh, when I got the job here at, back at Alvin Christian, Brian came on with me. He was actually already here uh, with Grant McCaskin, and, and I kept Brian on. And Brian was a part of the early transition uh, here that was some uh, – it was, you know, obviously the, some of the hardest days in, in our profession of coaching. And uh, then Brian went on and, and moved to Lamar and then to Fresno State to UTEP. And then uh, we're, we're honestly, um, I, I'm as proud of Brian as I've ever been um, in, our, in our friendship of, of knowing each other, is what he's done over the last six months. Um, I think he's really kind of found his niche. Uh, I told him that a couple months ago, and then I saw the other day where he, he um, is, is kind of going to go full-time in the next six to eight months with, uh, I think it's Rising Coaches, mm-hmm. I believe is what it is. Uh, but he's just done a tremendous job of bringing coaches uh, media guys, uh, everybody together during during this uh, during this COVID deal, and uh, he, he's brought up a lot of important topics, you know, uh, that need to be talked about. And uh, it, it's um, it's been it's been unbelievable for me to watch him shine in that arena. And uh, you know, he he knows he's connected to so many people. He's got a great personality. Uh, he's um, He's just done a tremendous job, you know, and, and I've been fortunate to be on a couple of those Zoom calls uh, where I've had the opportunity to, to listen and learn to, to some incredible people uh, on that. And then I've also just gone on his Zoom calls, you know, where he's had some different things. And uh, it's been great for me as a head coach uh, to listen and learn on that. But obviously, I take a lot of pride, too, of, of what Brian's doing. Um, I think he's changing lives. He's changing the way people think. Uh, he's, he's open discussion. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm sure you've had these talks all the time on Zoom, and, and we're, we're with the COVID and the social injustice stuff that's going on. Um, it's just an important time in our country, and at the end of the day, we got to love each other, and we got to continue to educate uh, people that m- might not believe the way you and I and Brian believe, but we got to listen, and we got to continue to educate those guys and love them. And um, it's hard to do during COVID when you can't be transparent with that and face to face. But he's obviously got an avenue. I know you've done a, probably a ton of it in, in, in your avenue with your radio show and. Um, so just proud of him and, and, and everything he's done with that. Yeah, Coach, we, we've been out here with the, with the early vote here in Georgia. We've been giving people food and drinks and snacks while they stand in line because, you know, the vote here is kind of long because of the laws here. But, you know, we've been trying to keep people encouraged and giving them food and water. So me and my sponsors have been going out, doing that early in the morning, do an afternoon run. I'm going to give our governor's call here. I'm going to do that right here as well on, on Friday. So we're working hard, Coach, trying to make it different like our community because I know I'm 33 years old, so I got to use the platform I have to, to, to do, use it for good, you know. <laughs> got to do that, man. No, there's no doubt we got to get the vote out, you know, and we, we got to – I've learned more about voting than I've ever uh, – just like COVID, I, I didn't know. And, and getting our whole team, we got every one of our guys signed up to vote. We're not making them vote. We're going to take November 3rd off to give them the opportunity to vote. A lot of our guys had to mail-in vote uh, because they obviously don't live here in Texas. But we wanted to give every kid the opportunity to vote. You know, we're encouraging them to vote. Um, I think it's – it's it's uh, the, the you know, getting this generation to, to, to learn that, you know, and, and it starts in your community, then obviously it goes national, but just getting them to interested in the issues, uh, knowledgeable about the issues and different candidates. And then also at the same time, uh, you know, the right to vote is, is very, very important. And so, uh, you know, th- th- this new gener- this young generation's awesome, man. They, 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 they're going to change the, They're going to change the world. They, they obviously it's, it's a different world than I was brought up in with the social media uh, stuff. I'm still learning the Twitter and everything else that's, <laughs> What's going on out there, but these guys, man, they're doing some incredible things, man. And I'm proud of our team. I'm proud of every team across the country that you see on Twitter that's doing stuff. I'm proud of all you guys for continuing to to share the message and the story. Um, and uh, and and hopefully we can we you know we can make this this world a better place uh, to, to live in. Oh, it's gold. Like I gotta say it better myself, buddy. Hey, man, stay safe out there in West Texas, man. And like I said, when hopefully we have, I can get out of the house here real soon, but <laughs> I can I can escape. <laughs> they sit here hey, you, 
<laughs> we're going to have to catch a game sometime. And you know I was coming to Hotlanta, man. I was ready for the Final Four, and we were going to meet. But I'm going to get down there one time and, and go to dinner with you. I can't wait, man. Same here, Coach. Hey, buddy. Hey, be so talk to you real soon. Have a great weekend, man. All right, thanks. Appreciate all you do. You're welcome. It's Joe Golden on the Boston Show, people. Check them out. West Texas, Abilene Christian, people.